And so we've seen a drastic change, and this only shows a, this doesn't show the true extent of the decrease, because in addition to the decrease in sea ice extent that you can see very clearly in this photo from the same time of year between 1979 and 2003, the thickness of the ice has decreased by 42% in 40 years. That's very well documented from submarine data, uh, Soviet and U.S. Uh, and French submarine data has been monitoring this for the last 50 years. And again, the rate of increase is, trem is, uh, is tremendously going up. And what's happened is before, the polar bear and other species could get to the pack ice with usually just walking onto it or maybe swimming 10 miles at the most. Now there's 300 miles of open water. The polar bears swim thinking surely they're going to get ice for millennia, millennia, millennia they have and the ice isn't there and they just can't keep swimming forever and, and they've been dying. And polar bear are, are expected to go extinct in the wild by 2050 as, at the earliest with current trends of, of climate change. Uh, and there is right now there's an effort to make them listed as endangered, uh, as threatened and soon they'll probably be be listed as endangered. They've already decreased in weight by 15% uh, in the last 20 years, and they have decreased the number of offspring by 15% in the last 20 years. And the main problem is that they can't get out on the pack ice to catch the seal. When they, they can swim pretty darn far, but they can't hunt when they're swimming. They need that, uh, that pack ice as a, a perch, and so they're going to be in a lot of trouble um, in years to come. And walrus too, they need, they live on the pack ice and they swim down to the bottom and feed on benthic organisms or clams. Well those clams, they feed off of the phytoplankton that live on the bottom of the sea ice. And as the sea ice disappears, so goes the phytoplankton, so goes the clams the, that the walrus and other uh, arctic cod, other animals need, and you're, it's destroying the whole food chain. Another big problem is the thinning ice gives the walrus a lot less room to, uh, to lay out. They're fighting amongst themselves on smaller pieces of ice. Um, and the um, walrus, too, are now in a state of decline. Formerly, it would be, I would almost never see a walrus washed up on the beach because as they would slowly die, animals would eat them out in the Arctic Ocean, and they just, this was a sight that you almost never saw. Now we see walrus washed up on the beach um, all over throughout the Arctic. It's a very common phenomenon, and they are in a state of decline now because of climate change. The black guillemots is another bird that lives on the uh, edge of the Arctic Ocean on cliffs, and historically it has flown out um, to the edge of the pack ice, which is where all the life is, to get the fish, and it flies back and regurgitates the fish to feed its young. What's happening is they can't get out to the edge of the pack ice. It's more than 100 miles away, and there's been a 90% nest failure in the last three years, and um, they're expected to go extinct in the wild as well, um, except in a few places um, where they can feed without the need of ice. Now, another big um, change is the, is the permafrost as it's melting, it's affecting the inland areas that I mentioned. The, these phenomena were never seen before until the last decade. These are sinkholes where cavities of ice have melted, leaving huge pits in the earth 20, 30 foot deep. Uh, animals are falling in these and dying. And let anyone who questions climate change fall into one of these and I think they'll get a, a wake up call. Um, these are unquestionably caused by climate change, um, and they're now being seen all throughout the Arctic. Because the water is blowing out underneath or something? It used to be these were cavities of ice that, it, that, were, that the land supported a level landscape, but it, there were cavities of ice underneath um, where there used to be deep pools and all or thousands, tens of thousands of years ago. And as they melt away, these cavities uh, came into the ground. So. Um, that's what uh, these sinkholes are caused by. And the same thing as the permafrost melts, um, that's what holds up these lakes. And these lakes are drying out all throughout the Arctic. Lakes are drying out, destroying habitat for birds and the reason the birds fly up there. And also the native peoples, uh, it's taken away the fishing grounds. And they're very, very uh, aware and, and uh, concerned about climate change. 
uh, glacial mass is vastly decreasing. There's one glacier in Alaska, the Columbia Glacier, that is decreasing by half a mile a year. And um, all, virtually all glaciers in the world are decreasing at a tremendous rate. And this is increasing the sea levels um, of the oceans. And this shows Glacier National Park. Um, there's uh, 155 glaciers in Glacier National Park in the mid-1800s. There's about 100 in 1900. We're down to uh, 31 and is expected to go to zero by 2030. They're melting away very quickly. This shows the Boulder Ice Cave in 1932. Then the next photo is the, ex this was a major tourist attraction. People could walk in to a cavernous cave within this glacier and look at the same exact spot uh, in 1988. It's all melted away. And we've seen a <coughs> greatly tremendous increase in climate change since 1988 as well. Uh, this shows the, uh, the Grinnell Glacier, was the, it? The, the first picture of the before 1988, that was what year? Uh, that was 1932. Oh, 32. Yeah. Okay. So in 50, 55 years, that glacier's gone. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the Remus Grinnell Glacier. Is a, uh, this is, again, before and after photos. You can see very clearly these are in Alaska. And this is in, in the Glacier National Park again. And another big effect is on the caribou. Um, the caribou need to retreat from mosquitoes in the summertime. Historically, they've used the remaining chunks of snow, uh, snow beds, uh, because the mosquitoes weren't there. Now these no longer remain through the summer, and even they can still go to gravel bars and in the shore of the Arctic Ocean. But this is a major place they needed to escape mosquitoes. So now they're getting harmed by mosquitoes much more severely. Another big impact is it's actually raining in the winter in the Arctic, and that was totally unheard of. If you asked a scientist 20 years ago, they would have laughed at you if it rained in the Arctic in the winter. Well, now it's happening almost every winter. One to two inches of ice is building up, and uh, the caribou normally just kick away the snow, and same with the muskox, normally just kick away the snow and feed on the uh, the plants, but they can't get through one or two inches of ice. They've been dying by the hundreds where this has occurred, such as in, on Barter Island, an island in the Arctic Ocean just uh, last year. And so the caribou um, are in a state of decline. The porcupine caribou herd has decreased by um, about 60,000 animals from 188,000 in the late 1980s to about 123,000 now. So. The muskox I mentioned, these uh, live year-round in the Arctic. Huh? Um, about, so you mean normally it wouldn't even rain, or would it snow? It would the, snow, it but would snow. yeah. And so, and th so yeah. they would able to be able to get the grass, but as it's raining, it's taking all the snow away. Yeah. It's raining, and when the rain hits the ground, it freezes and forms ice, and they can't get through the ice. They can okay. get through, they can just kick away the snow but they can't get through that ice, and so they can't get to the food they need, and they're starving. Okay. So, and the same, same exact thing with the muskox. Uh, they need to kick away that snow to feed in the winter. They can't get through the ice, and they're dying, and their, their population has been going down dramatically.